Hi there, it's Billy Tarasio with the Modern Divorce Podcast, and today I am joined by Mark Anderson. Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Billy. So Mark is um, one of the newest employees here at Modern Law. He is our social media and generally like our, our marketing manager, and he has a really great story and a great background. Um, and a, a very personal experience with family law. So today I wanted to let you all get to know Mark and his background and also hear his pretty fantastic story. So Mark, thank you so much for being willing to share that with us. Of course. Um, yeah, so as Billy said, I'm the uh, social media manager here at Modern Law. Um, handle our social accounts and been getting into some more stuff like our blog and uh, our call system, which is pretty cool. Um, so I've really been enjoying it here. Um, as for my story, um, <clears throat> I was uh, I was born in Westchester, Pennsylvania, and I grew up in and around the area uh, until I was about four, I'd say. Um, and then from that point on is basically how, where I remember my life. That's when my parents got uh, divorced. They, they split up when I was four. Um, Isn't the, it the, interesting the way that your parents' divorce really can be a defining moment and really is in a lot of children's lives? And one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about this with you is because a lot of our parents really worry about their children and the impact that their divorce is going to have. And all we can do is the best we can and know that everybody is individual and different and your story is not going to be somebody else's story, but there is a lot to be learned from other people's stories. So yeah. sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. So you were four, your parents got divorced, then what happened? Um, so the, they moved, well, I moved with my, uh, with my mom up to uh, what the town's called St. Mary's. So it's about a six hour drive, uh, six to eight hour drive. Um, two hours north of Pittsburgh is where the town's located. Um, from, from that point is where I started to like, remember things. The, the last thing that I remember from my parents being together was <laughs> vaguely driving in the passenger while well, I was in the backseat, um, driving past the house of the woman that my dad was with. I led my mom to the house somehow. I don't, know how I remembered my met my dad must have taken me there and I mentioned this person's name and my mom was like who's that can you take me there and there there my dad was sitting on the porch as we drove past so the last oh, thing I remember is that my gosh. um but I had no idea what was going on you know I'm, I mean a lot I guess a lot of kids you know they don't uh especially if they're brought around somebody who maybe there is something going on like aunt or uncle, whoever, whoever they're being called at the time. It's just, um, when, when do children start remembering these things and how does that affect their relationships into the future? So you had met your dad's mistress at some point you were four, you had been to her house and you very innocently mentioned, you know, this nice woman named whatever, and, and your mom said, well, show me. And, and somehow you knew where this was. You went, your dad was there. And then do you remember what happened afterwards? I just remember she said, I'm leaving. And then we left. <laughs> wow. Uh, very shortly after, yeah. Okay, so you moved six hours north. That means you did not have an equal parenting time relationship. Those weren't common, um, you know, when we were children or when you were children anyway. So how often did you see your dad? I would see him uh, for like a week or two every summer. Um, the snow out there is crazy in the winter. So we often didn't make the trip in the winter just for everybody's safety. Um, but yeah, one or two weeks in this, in the summer, I'd go see him. And, and very shortly after he had a new family, you know, which people do. Um, so I, I sort of had this like internal struggle with, do I go hang out with these potential brothers and sisters, or do I stay back with my mom who I know and love and, and, um, eventually I will get to this can manipulate, <laughs> um, 
or do or do I want to have this other life? Um, and I chose to be with my mom, but I, I don't remember making that choice. I think it was just made for me. And I never felt there was anything wrong with it. Sure. So you had very little contact with your dad. You then kind of felt like an outsider with your dad's new family. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, since I only saw them once a year, my, your memories are sort of like in this compact space where they just pack against each other over yeah. the years. Yeah. Um, and so I would see them growing, 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 growing. And then him and his new wife, my now still with her, my stepmom, um, they had two kids. Uh, so now there's these four kids who I want to be part of their lives, you know, and yeah. they are my half brother and half sister. And uh, so that that struggle became even harder to want to have this this family. But at the same time, I was I'm sort of a, an introvert. And I like to be home. I like to be around my things and have mm -hmm. everything my way. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I ever would have lasted with brothers and sisters anyway. So when you say you think now, looking back, that your mom manipulated the situation, tell me what you mean by that. Oh, I didn't mean that she manipulated the situation. I meant uh, later on, when you're a single child, you can manipulate your parents. Uh. Um, and... And I guess that's where a big part of, uh, you know, our, our step parenting um, conversation comes in because, um, you know, just as my my dad started a new relationship, so did my mom, I think uh, uh, maybe less than a year, um, she started seeing a guy who's who's my stepdad now. Mm -hmm. He's the only person I ever remember her, her being with after my dad, mm -hmm. which is pretty crazy in today's standards um, because... I, uh, I had a tendency, still have a tendency to uh, date single moms. <laughs> so that's sort of, I don't know how that becomes intertwined, but I sort of realized it before our, before our chat today that all this stuff that happened to, to me, uh, well, not all this stuff, but just the things that happened in my life sort of made me, even in relationships, go toward those women who are alone, you know, yeah. who maybe I can rescue. I don't know what the, what the thing is. I, maybe I see a correlation with my mom Yeah. and not sure with what happened with their story. I just automatically think um, these people are like my mother. I gravitate towards them. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That is interesting. That is super interesting. So you are now a step parent of your own. And, um, and, and I want to explore that. I want to explore step parent relationships. So you've got, you've got step parents on both sides of your, of your family that have been around for a long time since you were a very young child. Um, how, what role did they play in your life? Um, well, growing up, my stepdad, uh, I, since I was probably five or so, he took, he took me in, he had a daughter of his own, but she lived with her mom. So they, they were divorced too. There's mm -hmm. all this intertwined <laughs> divorce uh, relationships. Um, so at this house, it was basically, I was the kid at the house. Uh, mm -hmm. She, you know, she was the visitor. She was me for mm -hmm. my brothers and sisters. So, mm -hmm. you know, like um, I felt like when she was around, that was taking away from, you know, from me, like she's in, in my zone, but how can I, how can I say that when it's her father's house? You know? right. Um, even, even now I feel closer with him than, than she does. I, I think, yeah. um, I, I think I stay in more contact than, than she does. Um, but that's all a result of me being there all the time. You know, it's, it's not necessarily, who your family becomes the people that support you no matter who they are you know from from whatever angle the people that you are going to run to that you look to for advice um are always the ones that you trusted growing up yeah um, and I never had any sort of breach of trust with him he uh always just sternly defended my mom mm. and 
now when I look at my um, my girlfriend's son, I don't get involved until he starts to disrespect her. And when when the yelling happens, when the throwing happens, when the tantrums happen, I try to stay back until it gets to the point where he's I can feel him. I can feel myself in him, you know, like sure. I I channel my stepdad, which is something I never thought I would do. <laughs> and I, I am hearing the things come out of my mouth that he used to say. And I'm just like, these are the things that I like absolutely did not like about you. Um, but you don't realize until you're going through it yourself that that's that's needed. Um, single moms need a support system um, especially once your kids get around like the five to seven age, once they start getting defiant, wanting to do other, um, do more advanced things, more adult things that, you know, they, they might not be ready for. It's hard without that second person there to, to back you up. Yeah. I mean, that is, that is such a great point. So it sounds like as a child, your stepdad was very aligned with your mom, very supportive of your mom you know, very supportive of you, didn't really discipline you unless it was to say, Hey, I don't like the way you're treating your mother. And you hated that. (laughs) Yes. Um, Because normally when, when you're treating your mother negatively, it's because you're not getting something you want. And that's that manipulation I was speaking of. You need someone to stand in between your, your manipulative child and the parent who's being manipulated sometimes you don't see it uh when no one's there yeah. and you just let it happen and that grows into just a pattern of disrespect and a pattern of entitlement and it's it's hard to put a stop to later on in life okay um, so i want to talk about this for a minute because um i've got four kids i've got them half the time anybody who listens to this knows that and my children absolutely 100% have tried and do try to pit my ex and I against each other. And I think that that is my opinion, completely normal. I think it is so normal. I think you have to expect it. You have to look for it. If you are a divorced parent or a separated parent, understand that it is your child's job to push boundaries. And this is one of those boundaries. So look for it. Because when I have clients that are parents that believe that they're, everything their child says is true, they're not setting their child up for success. And they're really not setting up their co-parenting relationship for success. And, uh, and then the other thing is just, I've been very honest with my kids. Like, I understand you're trying to manipulate me and pit your dad and I against each other, but we're still your parents and we're still on the same parenting team. And you know how comforting it is for kids to hear that? Like, that is what they want to hear, regardless of whether or not they will admit it. So that's just a little aside on um, child manipulation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's almost like a mutual respect. Like, you know, you know, like you look at your kids and you're like, listen, I know you're smart. I know what you're trying to do, but you need to realize that number one, I probably already done this. Mm-hmm. And number two, we're just as smart, if not smarter than you. So let's, uh, let's be real here. Let's understand each other and, and our own capabilities. But um, that check needs to happen. You know, like th- that, that understanding needs to happen too. And um, well, and the family dynamics get so complicated when parents are splitting up that you can lose sight of like the, the structure and authority that has to be in place for a family to work and for children to feel secure. Like you have got to be the head of your house. Like they have to understand that. You can't, and, and, you know, we're in this gentle parenting movement, which I totally get and support. And at the same time, like you have to have a structure of authority. Now as a step parent, how does, how, how does that work? Yeah. Um, I think the way that I, the way that I approached, um, my, my girlfriend's son was, I became friends with him first. Um, we talked about anything you want to talk to. He loves video games. So do I, he loves, uh, movies and like, uh, mythical creatures and monsters. So do I. So we sort of, 
uh, related on that to where it's almost all he still talks about. Mm-hmm. Um, but he always wants to, he's excited to see me. He wants to talk to me. He wants to play with me. Um, and I think that that trust in me all stemmed from me wanting to be friendly with him to get closer with his mother. And, <laughs> <laughs> and not, not, not uh, you know, specifically in a sexual way, but, you know, when, when you're dating a girl with a kid, the main thing they love is that their kid loves you. That is the first thing that, you know, in all my experience, if you get along with, with the kids, you're golden. If the kids trust you and respect you and it's true, that's all you need to, be, you know, to begin your step parenting relationship. Um, wow. And this is I, key dating advice for anybody <laughs> single out there. Yeah, yeah. Get close to the kids. They matter a lot. That's true. They do. Um, and, that, and that's not just, you know, trying to sleep with somebody. You know, you, if you really want a relationship with this person, you got to love their kids and, and respect their kids and understand them. And luckily I got a kid who is super smart, super cool, super talented. And he likes like the same stuff I do. Um, so yeah, I think the, one of the first steps to figuring out how to be a step parent is, is just understanding the child and relating to what they like. And, you know, I met him when he was, five he's going to be nine this year so you know it, it kind of depends on when you come in I got lucky you know I think you came in a little later on some of your your stepkids and I I, I don't even know how to handle that but I'm lucky enough that I got to watch him grow get that respect before I just jump in at teenage years and I'm just the intruder now you know I'm so I'm so happy and I would never want to have to like do this over again and jump into an older kid's life. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So my ex-husband had an 18 month old when we got married. Um, her name is Kaylee. I'm still super, super close to her. She was part of our family. It was easy. It was so easy. First of all, she's easy and she's amazing. Um, but it was also the age and the, and the, the way that the family developed, we, we had proximity early on. So proximity is super important to build a family. Like you didn't have proximity with your dad and your stepmom and those kids. And so you can't build a family without proximity or it's way harder. Now with my current partner, he's got uh, three kids, they're older and we don't have proximity. Like he, he, he's in a long distance parenting plan. So figuring out how to be a step parent um, with children that are in a long distance parenting plan who are older is way harder than figuring it out with a little kid who comes over to your house every single week. Um, and it's been a a real adventure. (laughs) (laughs) And I, and I guess you get to the point where those kids, like, maybe they don't want to be there for that, you know, period of time. And that's, that's its own struggle. You know, like, I want to see you, but you have your life now and you'd rather be off with your friends. You know, you're, you're to that point. I, I enjoy the happy little kid, <laughs> you know, ready to play and have fun right now. So I love my teenagers. I have really, really enjoyed like parenting them. And I think all the same philosophies are true. Like you have to be interested in what they're interested in. You have to like respect them as humans. And at the same time, you have to have a certain level of authority and order because that's how kids thrive. Those, those two things. Now, you know, figuring out authority and order and relationship, all of those things in a short period of time is not easy. Are there things that your dad and stepmom did that, that were good? And are they, are there things that they could have done differently? What they did that was good is they managed, they managed to raise four awesome kids um, that also have, you know, this, the two daughters, you know, their, their dad was back home. They moved, they moved out here 
um, all of the rest of our family is basically back home. Um, so they managed two cross country relationships. Um, one, the, the one with my mom wasn't too volatile, the other one, a little more, uh, crazy. Um, but I don't, I don't know how they, I don't know how they did that. As far as the bad stuff, you know, I wasn't around enough to see what they did wrong. Every time that I, I came around, it was like a, a party, you know? Yeah. So you, when, when you don't see people for extended periods of time, the, you come to visit, they sort of let go of any tension they have, uh, sort of to appease you. And, you know, I, I was, I guess I was lucky enough to have that too. I wasn't dropped into some situation. I didn't know it was going to happen. You know, I, I came out every year, um, you know, once they moved out, knowing that we would all have a good time. And then I would have this like family time um, nice. together with them. Yeah. Um, that's the thing with a long distance parenting plan. You're almost like on vacation when you have your kids and it's very easy for um, the parent you know, the custodial parent to feel angry about that or resentful because like, you know, the non-custodial parents having all the fun, doing all the partying, not the homework, not the memorizing, not the disciplinary stuff. Um, but I think what you said is, is really crucially important. Like it has to start with relationship. And so if you only have your kids for a little while, then the focus should be relationship. Before you get to discipline or homework or habits, the focus should be investing in the relationship because that is really the foundation that everything else is built upon. And so sometimes that's the best you can do. Yeah. Yeah. I know that my mom was, uh, we didn't have a lot of money growing up, so we didn't go on like vacations. We went to Disney World maybe maybe one time. It was like our family extravaganza. <laughs> and uh so every time that I would come out, I'd get on a plane by myself. It was an adventure for me. I loved it. And um, she supported me in that. But I think that um, she, she was kind of like, uh, well, he goes out to see his father, who, you know, I obviously don't have the best thoughts about, but he's going to have fun there. His dad's going to show him a great time. He's going to come back, you know, happy. But when do I get to give that to him? Mm -hmm. You know? But what I think people don't understand is um, as as the uh, departing parent, you are giving that to them. You you are allowing them to get what they want. They need time with the other parent, um, no matter if it's the, the mom or the dad, no matter you know what your relationship with is them. You need to let them forge their own relationship. And my mom did that for me. And uh, yeah that sort of uh, works into, you know, where my story goes. I, uh, a few years ago, my, uh, my dad and I had a falling out um, over a stupid misunderstanding, a stupid conversation. Um, and we hadn't talked for two years. So within that time, I had a son and he was not part of it. Um, vaguely he wanted to be i could i could tell um i i was waiting for an apology on this situation that i that i didn't get um and so where i was sort of going with this was i asked a question the other day on cora and it was um should you mend broken relationship with your parents for your kids mm. um and it got it got crazy responses. Um, most of them saying what what I was speaking of earlier: don't cut somebody off your children from a relationship that with their grandparents because you don't see eye to eye with them. That relationship will be different. It doesn't necessarily mean that what happened to you will happen to them, but you need to let them see that for themselves. Ooh, it's a good point. You know, it's a really, really good point viewing the grandparent child relationship as sort of similar to how we view the parent child relationship. It's their relationship. It's their relationship to have. And they sort of have a right to that relationship as long as it's safe, as long as, you know, you're, you're not putting your kid in harm's way. And by that, I don't mean like grandma and grandpa cuss and, you know, 
eat crappy food and therefore I'm putting them in harm's way by going. I mean, like, are your kids literally going to be harmed? Because probably the good outweighs the bad or the good of a relationship, even if they, you know, are hoarders and smoke, it probably still outweighs not having that relationship. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah, yeah, totally. And swearing and smoking end up being something that you like cherish about your grandparents. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, I remember I used to come over, F this, F that. Like, I used to count my grandfather's swear words when we would take the trip yeah. from St. Mary's down to Philly. Mm-hmm. Um at one time, I think it was like 76 F's he popped out driving on the ah, <laughs> And you loved it. You're like, yeah, yeah. Amazing. And that's and that becomes a thing. So um, so that's fine. Um, and actually, so the the question that I posted on Quora, um, it just it motivated me to reach out to my dad. And yesterday I did. And um I told him I want him to, to meet Otto, my son, and uh I was tired of having this hole in my chest. And uh, I think that I think that he he did, too. So so Sunday we're going down. He's finally going to meet him for the first time. And um, it's going to be an emotional day right after pro bono day. Mark, that's <laughs> so exciting. Uh, I know. I know. I'm, that's I'm so exciting. Ah, uh, I think the other like moral of the story is sometimes like just again, personal opinion, sometimes it's better to move on than to seek um, resolution. Like sometimes resolution isn't now, maybe resolutions later. And sometimes just, just deciding to, to move on is, is your best bet forward when you're out in the past. Yeah. And I knew, I knew what I wanted to end it all. And all that it was, was an apology. And some people don't like to give apologies. Some people don't. And you have to understand that some people don't like to apologize because they don't like to admit that they were wrong. They don't want to bring up the situation again. They don't want to open up an avenue for you to tell them what they did wrong and how it hurt you because they know. And just opening that up would, would prove that they're, you know, that they, they hurt you. And um, then I thought, well, what's a sentence going to, what's it going to mean to me? After that said, am I just going to be like, oh, everything's gone? Well, yeah. So why do I need that sentence so much? Right. Um, yeah. Someone has to, the, the big quote is be the bigger man. Yeah. But uh, somebody has to be willing to forgive first. And what you get out of that is the fruit. Um, you also get to feel like, you initiated it, you know, and um, it was all your decision to allow your family to move forward, especially especially your kids who um, if they haven't got to meet your grandparents, their grandparents, what if they never do? Yeah. And then that's on you. And that was one of the comments. And that hit that hit pretty hard. I was like, I had never thought of it like that. I never thought of it as I'm depriving someone of meeting someone else because of a sentence that I want said to me, an apology. And is that is that apology worth all this, all this uh, drama, all this internal stress, all this faux hatred? No, certainly not. And and it's not worth it to uh, to bring that into your baby's lives either. Well, Mark, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on and for sharing your story and letting people meet you. No one will have any doubts as to why you got hired at Modern Law and why you were so amazing. We're so happy to have you. So thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me, Billy.